Preach the word of God, be instant in season and out of season. First Bible lesson, Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Golden text, Matthew chapter 10 verse 8, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Brethren, it appears to me the gospel, which the Father would deliver this morning, will form the handbook of the Crusaders. Whosoever, therefore, is not prepared to take up this assignment as his bounding duty, should not address himself as a crusader. All those who have been anointed, and upon whom the Spirit of God has rested, are crusaders. You cannot preach unless you are sent forth, Romans chapter 10 verse 15. This was the vision which Isaiah the prophet had. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. This prophecy concerns you, and me, and them, and those he has anointed. That is why, our Lord Jesus Christ has said, Except a man be born of water and of spirit he cannot do the work of God. John chapter 3 verse 5. No person can preach the word of God. No person can heal the sick and no person can afford to show the expression of love or patience except he is sent forth by God. This gospel will constitute your handbook. It is going to be written and published into a pamphlet, so, wherever you go, you can present it as your letter of authority. And more importantly, it is this gospel you will put on as the armor of God, wear as your uniform, as your hat and as your shoes. Know your divinely assigned duties, why you have problems. Do you not know the cause of your problems? The Spirit of God is upon you, because He has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Have you taken up this assignment? Is there any person, in the whole brotherhood world, upon whom the Spirit of God has not rested? Is there any crusader who will argue, the Spirit of God is not upon him? Is there any elder, or chorister, or ordained one who can argue, the Spirit of God is not in him? Why then do you complain, you do not know your duty? Why do you ask what your assignment should be? Your duty is to preach the word of God to all the inhabitants of the world. Go and preach the recovering of sight to the blind. Preach those who are oppressed should be liberated. Preach those who are bruised should be set at liberty. Teach the people to practice the word of God. Preach to the people to refrain from fornication, falsehood, indulgence in the preparation of concoctions, theft and from all other vices taught to you by God himself. You have been informed why you have to preach. You do not have to go out to preach with your earthly wisdom, experience, or wisdom of the world. Go to the government department and show the civil servants the truth. Enter the farms, companies, boards and corporations, go to the church denominations, go to the villages and towns, and preach to the oppressors, they should set at liberty those they continue to oppress. Make the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, dumb to speak, the lepers to be cleansed, and also prophesy. You have been anointed to preach, your trouble is, you have rejected the invitation extended to you. This invitation is not extended to you by the government. You did not call yourself, John chapter 15 verse 16, but it is your creator, the God who created you, with whom you existed before the foundations of the world were laid, it is he, whom has anointed you for this divine assignment. Not only when you are ordained, but every person has been anointed and adorned for the assignment. You were invited not only to see visions because that is secondary, but you should preach the good tidings of this kingdom to the poor, preach deliverance to the captives, preach the recovering of sight to the blind, to heal the broken-hearted and to set at liberty them who are bruised. This assignment is not only for you, but also for all the inhabitants of the world. Can you see the person who has sent you? 
It is God Almighty who has commissioned you to take up the assignment in all parts of the world. You are appointed by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, because He has anointed you to preach the new kingdom of God. You are not chosen by any human being, but God Almighty has elected you as His Christ to go forth and spread the good news of this kingdom and reveal the glory of God. It is said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts chapter 2 verse 21 the question is, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach, except they be sent? Romans chapter 10 verses 14 and 15. But today the picture is different. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, because he has anointed you to preach the recovering of the sight to the blind. Preach deliverance to the captives. Preach to the oppressors to set at liberty them that are bruised, both men and women in all places, there should be no division among persons. All segregative and discriminatory tendencies should be stopped forthwith. Preach from the top of a mountain that the kingdom of God has come. Preach from the valleys that the kingdom has already arrived. You were not called to farm but to preach, there is no other assignment you have, which is greater than this, because it is the assignment God has set aside for you, to spread the glad tidings of great joy to all the inhabitants of the world. Your commercial activities are but secondary to this assignment. Your governorship position is also secondary but also for your self-aggrandizement. All these traits help you to earn a living, but your divinely assigned duty is, to declare the good news of this kingdom to people in the world, because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and because He has anointed you. The reason of your being sent to this plane of manifest is, you should preach the glory of God. Brethren, the die will soon be cast, the time is at hand, that explains why the whole world is now shaking. You have been sent forth to preach the word of God but it is observed, many of you are Jonas. God has sent you forth, but you have refused to take up the assignment. Worship God in spirit and in truth, to worship God in spirit and in truth, is to preach the word of God. There is no other way of worshipping God except by preaching the word of God. The scriptures have confirmed, the true worshippers must worship God in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 verse 23 The essence of worshipping God in spirit and in truth is to preach the gospel of God, preach the good tidings to the poor, preach and heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, preach the recovering of sight to the blind, preach to and set at liberty those who are bruised, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Preach to the people. Point out and rebuke them of their offenses. Proclaim the kingdom of God and reveal His glory to the whole world. The position of the sonship of God is not purchasable. You are true witnesses to the fact, our Lord Jesus Christ is the great shepherd of the sheep. He is the chairman of the Crusaders Fellowship. He has commissioned all His elects into the world to preach the word of God because the Spirit of God is now upon them. As you are aware the mother of the two sons of Zebedee went to our Lord Jesus Christ and asked him to grant that her two sons should sit with him, one on his right hand and the other on the left in his glory. Matthew chapter 20 verses 21 to 23. He asked her sons, Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on my right hand, and on my left, is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Examine that statement of our Lord Jesus Christ, it symbolizes you, you are those who sit on his right or left hand. The position of the sonship of God is not purchasable till eternity. The position allocated to you is as one upon whom the Spirit of the Lord is bestowed. For you to be commissioned by God to preach His word, and for you to be elected as the beloved child of God, wields a great significance, and the glory is not only great but also incomprehensible. The Christ is glorified, as our Lord Jesus Christ had said, the time is ripe for the Son of Man to be glorified. John chapter 13 verse 31. He says except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. John chapter 12 verse 24. You can realize, he has yielded many fruits. 
In his last advent, he was the only person upon whom the Spirit of Jehovah was bestowed that he should preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. Upon the millions of people whom John baptized the Spirit of the Lord was not upon any of them. Upon the number of people the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ baptized, John chapter 4 verse 2, none of them was bestowed with the Spirit of God. Even the disciples who accompanied him, the Spirit of God was not upon any of them. Notice the significance of the something you are toying with. God has elected you as his Christ, his beloved Son, bestowing on you power and wisdom and certain duties, but you do not appreciate it. It is said, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts chapter 2 verse 39 How then will you be able to serve God, when the Spirit of God is not upon you? How will you preach the word of God when you do not receive the word of God? If God does not dwell in you, and you in him, how will you preach the word of God? For he whom God hath sent speaketh the word of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. John chapter 3 verse 34 Do you realize now God has come down to dwell in you? God has given his words, his spirit, his power, his wisdom and his love unto you, you should, Therefore go forth to spread that love by practical demonstration. You should go and unite the whole world because it is said whoever suffers from scabies is given long nails to scratch his body. Many are called but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22 verse 14. He has selected you into his kingdom. Though he had seen the whites, the blacks, the colored, the millionaires, yet he has chosen you who are not regarded according to his promise that the weak things of this world might be used to confound the things which are mighty. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 It is not a new thing, even from the beginning of the world, that the gospel of God has always been fulfilled on the despised and the rejected. It is said many are called but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22 verse 14 The crusaders have now realized, their major assignment is to preach and practice the word of God all over the world, in all nooks and corners, and to reveal the glory of God. It is not the duty of crusaders to build battles. But the Spirit of God is upon them that they should go and preach the kingdom of God and to win souls unto God. They have not been commissioned to go and build a battle, where a few persons gather for the purpose of worshipping. Crusaders, have you not realized, it is your assignment to go forth and make all nations know themselves. Preach the word of God not with wisdom of words, those who set up small battles where a few persons gather to worship have been destined so to do, but they are not crusaders. Wherever you see a permanent concrete building, there is also a water and touch building. Whenever you find pieces of gold, there must also be found pieces of wood. You were elected to preach the word of God not with experience, or wisdom of words, or with the craftiness of the word lest the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ should be made of none effect. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 We should, therefore, accept this onerous assignment with great joy. There are other sheep outside. When you go to walk among them, the Spirit of Jehovah will be upon them. You will be united together with them. Any person upon whom the Spirit of Jehovah has not rested, should lament because he is not yet required by God, and you have no reason to blame him. If he wants to engage in any venture whether farming, trading or contracting, allow him since he has not yet been elected. Nevertheless, it is said, any person who lacks, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. The whites are prepared to take up this assignment, but the Spirit of the Lord is not upon them. It is your duty to go to them and preach the gospel, so they shall be endowed with the Holy Spirit, because they are willing to do this work diligently and devotedly. Brethren, I do not intend to overload you with this food, the first lesson will now be read. First Bible lesson, Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. There should be no discrimination, brethren, have you had your assignment read out to you? It is your duty to preach the gospel and reveal this kingdom to the unbelievers. Go and preach deliverance to those who continue to enslave or oppress others. Preach to those who continue to show divisive, 
segregative or discriminatory tendencies. Go to those who are divided among the various church denominations, secret societies and religions, those who are ethnocentric, preach to them, the kingdom is at hand, there should be no distinction or differentiation among the peoples or the groups, there is no division between the Jews and the Greeks. Preach the word of God always, the major assignment for you all is to preach the word of God. Do you know, to worship God in spirit and in truth is to preach the word of God. There is no other way to salvation. Whether you knock your head on the ground or in heaven, if you do not preach the gospel it is evident, you have not worshipped God in spirit and in truth. If you like, fast for forty days and forty nights but if you do not preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach the recovering of sight to the blind, preach to the infidels and the idolaters, causing them to refrain from idolatry and be endowed with the Spirit of God, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord, you have not done anything. It is of none effect for you to extract charms from someone, but you do not preach to him the word of God. It does not serve any useful purpose for you to give thousands of naira to someone, but you fail to preach the gospel to him. It means, you have not done the work of God at all. Preach the word of God always. Preach in the morning and in the evening, preach at dawn and at dusk. Preach in the night and during the day. Preach the word of God inside the sea, in the air, on hilltops, in valleys, in the desert place and everywhere all the days of your life. If you do not preach the word of God for a single minute, you have erred, because it is your divinely assigned duty to preach the word of God. Only the word of God can redeem the world, what will make this world good? It is the word of God. What will make it bad? It is the word of God also. The word of God is a two-edged sword and those who receive the word of God are saved, and those who reject the word of God are doomed. If you do not preach the word of God to those who worship Mamed, those who indulge in the preparations of concoctions, those who hate their brothers and also steal, how would they refrain from these vices? If Jonah had not gone to Nineveh to preach repentance to the people, what would have prompted them to repent and be saved? Jonah chapter 1 verses 2 to 17. Remember what happened to Jonah when he refused to carry out the divine message. So it is with many children of brotherhood all over the world. The Spirit of the Lord is upon all of them to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. But they refuse to comply with the assignment and rather look for money, motor vehicle and wife, tell lies and steal. How would the unbelievers be converted if there is no preacher? If you browse through the Memorandum of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, the provision spells out, the duty of all brotherhood is to preach the word of God from house to house and from town to town in all places, in the church, in the government offices, in the forest, on mountains and in the seas. It is better to preach than to serve tables. Remember, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God, and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer, and to the ministry of the word. Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. Prayer is the key to heaven, to worship God in spirit and in truth is preaching the word of God unceasingly, always, preaching and praying. For the spirit is prayer and the truth is the word of God. Brethren, if you do not pray, it will be impossible for you to preach the word of God, because the key which was handed over to Peter was prayer. But it is a pity, many of you here do not pray, since you are consoled, the Father is always praying for everybody. This is erroneous, you should always pray fervently that the gate may be open for you. Pray without ceasing, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Before you fast, you have to pray because fasting and prayer go hand in hand. There is no other way, you cannot commune and have fellowship with God except through prayer. He has reminded us in the scriptures, we should pray without ceasing, and that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Pray as you are sitting there. Pray when you are walking along the road. Before you eat, pray. 
before you do anything, pray. If you do not pray, it is, you are not led by the Spirit of God. The injunction of worshipping God in spirit and in truth is by preaching. It is the duty not only of crusaders, but also of all brotherhood as well as the children of God in this new world. Pray that God should give you boldness to preach, do you remember when the chief priest called Peter and the other apostles and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? But Peter stood up and interrogated them whether it was right in the sight of God to hearken unto men more than unto God, judge it yourself. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Acts chapter 4 verses 19 and 20. Being let go, they went to their company and reported all, the chief priests and elders had said unto them. When the disciples heard, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and prayed, Lord thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Acts chapter 4 verse 29 That is the type of prayer brotherhood children should offer, that the Father should instill in them boldness to preach, and not to pray God to give you money, motor vehicles, children, to be promoted or to pass examination, which will never be answered by God. It is advised, we should not pray God for carnal things but for spiritual things. Pray God to give you the power to preach the word of God with boldness, and when this spirit rests upon every person, you will stand before the governor, or president, king or queen, or any other person and speak the word of God with boldness, and without fear or favor. Stewards of the Christ should be faithful, can you confirm, the gospel preached by the Father is the type you preach. Your fear lies in the fact, you cannot preach exactly as the Father since you cannot practice the words of God because when you preach any gospel to your congregation, members will ask you whether you practiced what you preach. That is why, the scripture directs, we be accounted for as the ministers of our Lord Jesus Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, and that it is required in stewards, we, as stewards, be found faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 The reason for your failure is, you have deliberately refused to practice the word of God. The purpose of inviting you to this worldwide crusaders week is to adorn you with the whole armor of God, to give you the ability and power to practice the words of God, so you can preach to others who cannot hear from the horse's mouth. We have no other duty to perform apart from making the inhabitants of the world to repent and follow God. Preach boldly before kings, this is the era of the glory of God. Before the presidents, Governors or other functionaries are duly elected into office, there must be a heated and long-drawn political campaign by the party agents to tell people how the candidate is good and honest, and how interesting the manifestos of the party are. Have you not heard, we have been selected to go forth and campaign for our Lord Jesus Christ? That the Christ has come, God has come himself, that he is manifesting himself everywhere and that people should refrain from all appearances of evil. Reveal to them the mighty works he has wrought and how he has saved and healed many. Do not direct any person to go to Calabar, or to Lagos or to Britain. Wherever you go, as soon as the people accept baptism, the Spirit of the Lord will be bestowed on them, and they will also begin to preach and practice the Word of God. Any person who is not bestowed with the Spirit of the Lord is empty and cannot do anything. Those who have not yet been bestowed with the Spirit of the Lord should weep, lament and seek after him by all means. Do not sow the seed of division but preach love, why all the church denominations are empty is, the Spirit of God is not upon them. You cannot be annoyed with them because if the Spirit of the Father is not upon you, it will be impossible for you to do this work. God has specifically ordained you, as his elect and a peculiar people, and bestows his Spirit on you, go forth and preach to the people, preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind. It is not your assignment to abuse or cause them and cause division among the people. There is no use in your going into any Christian church to tell people to transfer into brotherhood, this is erroneous. That is not your assignment. Already all the inhabitants of the world are brotherhood. It is your duty to unite them in love. Impart the teachings and doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people the world over, so they obtain their freedom, so they no longer indulge in the acts of theft, idolatry, fornication or homongering or in the preparations of concoction. 
the word of God surpasses everything, as long as the church denominations continue to tell lies, indulge in the preparations of concoction, drink and fornicate, they serve no useful purpose to God, their number notwithstanding. No matter how numerous the members of the church, and if they construct a very large building, they are of none effect to God, as long as they continue to indulge in the preparations of concoction, light the candle, beat the drum and fornicate. It is for this reason, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, because He has anointed you to preach the gospel to them. Even if high secret society men, high lodge members and millionaires congregate at one place, and build a magnificent place for their meeting, in so far as they indulge in envying, quarreling, division or malice their congregation is not pleasing in the sight of God. It is therefore, your duty to preach to them, this is the time of mercy, and they should put on the word of God as an armor. Without the Spirit of God there is no life, hold fast to the Spirit the Father has bestowed on you, because if it is taken away from you, you will perish. No person can live without the Spirit of God. Remember, when on the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ prayed saying, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, Luke chapter 23 verse 46. He gave up the ghost. Thereafter the apostles were overwhelmed with fear, none of them remembered any of his doctrines and they all retired to their various streets and villages. But after resurrection, he appeared and charged them to go and wait in Jerusalem until they be clothed with power from on high. If they were not clothed with spirit and power, they would not preach or practice the teachings of the Christ till today. Brethren, the gift endowed upon you by God at this end of time is better imagined than described, because it is wonderful. For a man to be a money magnate, a millionaire but devoid of this spirit, he is not loved by God, neither has he been endowed with any divine gift. If any person boasts, God loves him because he has the PhD degree, and he is a millionaire, ask him if the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. If his answer is the negative, tell him he is not loved by God. Any person who is not endowed with the Holy Spirit will indulge in the preparation of concoction, fornicate, tell lies and steal. He is not alive because he is dead and rotten. Prayer and fasting are weapons of war. The only request you should make is, you should always ask the Father to give you power to preach the word of God boldly, and the Father will hearken to your prayers. Your weapons of war and your preparedness are fasting and prayer always. A great many people argue, the work of crusaders requires a lot of money. I tell you, it requires no money, no food, because all the food and money in the world belong to the Father. He owns everything. Observe how sickly, wretched, how emaciated we are and how darkness has covered the world. You find a bishop with talisman around his neck, and an archbishop with protective ring and belt, a traditional ruler with talisman. Church members, government officials, the presidents, the governors and the ministers all indulge themselves in the preparation of concoction, charms and talisman. Whereas the Bible states, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 All those who indulge in charms, necromancy and preparation of concoction stand condemned. They are also beset with death, sickness and tribulation. That is why, all crusaders have been charged to preach the word of God from house to house and from one community to the other, both by day and by night, to save the world from destruction. Those who enslave themselves in these diabolical things have the erroneous belief, God helps those who help themselves, and it is for this reason, the wrath of God is visited upon the children of disobedience. It is for that cause, you are sent forth to preach the word of God to them that God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, is on earth as the only protector and guardian. Who says, you are not saved? You are saved. The true worshippers worship God in spirit and in truth. The word of God, prayer and fasting are your only weapon because you have neither charms nor concoction nor ghost. Since you have been endowed with the spirit of God, you alone have the ability to save the world. The world cannot save itself. Let us now have our second lesson. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Unification of all races is the most important work, brethren. Have you heard what your assignment is? 
Notice the type of duty you are toying with. Realize why you have no peace in your life, you are always beset with diverse problems. But this is the time of grace and the era of mercy, but after that comes judgment. Have you heard your commission? Our Lord Jesus Christ charges you to go and make all nations his disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded you. Go and preach to the whites teaching them, they should be united with other races of mankind. The work of unification is the work referred to by our Lord Jesus Christ as the work greater than the one he did. The greatest work is the amalgamation of the entire human race. Go and make all nations God's disciples. If you heal the sick, our Lord Jesus Christ also healed the sick. If you seek after only people from your own tribe, our Lord Jesus Christ was also looking for the lost sheep of Israel. Your assignment is now spelt out. You should go and make all nations the disciples of God. You should not confine yourself within the Cross River State, Imo State, even within Nigeria or Africa, but you should go to all parts of the world and evangelize the people. Remember what he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark chapter 16 verse 16 And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mark chapter 16 verses 17 and 18 You have now been charged to go and make all nations the disciples of God and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The implication of this is, there should be no division and discrimination. Brethren, if the unification of Nigeria is a task very difficult to accomplish, will it not be an uphill task to unite the whole world? This assignment does not consist in your celebrating the feast and testifying, your family is saved, but in your going to preach, in order to make all nations the disciples of Christ. Signs of those who are saved, you have gone to Europe, America and Asia, as well as other parts of the world, and you really see the extensiveness of the world. But when you return from ministry work from your local area, you ask your wife to fan you. What really have you done? Some of you after you have been baptized, put up a battle and sit in there always to worship. There is no duty more important than the one of going out to preach the word of God and to baptize the people. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, I use the Spirit of God to drive away the evil spirit from you, and you receive the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 12 verse 28 Whoever receives the Spirit of God will be saved. When he accepts baptism he is saved. It is said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mark chapter 16 verses 16 to 18 Peter baptized 3,000 in a day. How many have you baptized? Why is it, only 12 disciples converted thousands of people, but the whole bunch of you has not converted many people? Peter alone baptized about 3,000 people in one day. Acts chapter 2 verse 41 None of you have ever baptized up to a thousand persons. When you go on ministry work you always pack members into large luxurious buses for ministry work. When you reach your destination you all remain in the battle, sing, dance and eat feast, the following morning you board your bus again and return to your houses. You do not preach to people in the town, nor do you baptize any person. At times you travel in a car to Lagos, what about all the villages, towns and communities you pass through? Have you already preached to them? The passage requires, you should go and make all nations God's disciples. At other times you board a plane and travel to Britain or America. What about all the countries you fly across, have you made them the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ? I am consoled, only the crusaders have listened to my instruction. The pastors undertook a ministry work to Britain and Rome in Italy to see the Vatican City. How many people did they baptize in either London or Rome? Advise people not to indulge any longer in the preparation of concoctions, preach to them, and also pray for them. You fear people, but God is no respecter of persons, Acts chapter 10 verse 34. 
your father is still snuffing. Instead of preaching to him to refrain from snuffing, you call him to kneel down and receive your prayers. When you deal with a very important personality, you will tell him to follow you to Calabar to see the father, instead of your teaching him the truth, he should repent and confess his sins and be baptized. You are true witnesses, no person come to me without my advising them to be baptized in order to be saved. Your problem is, you are always afraid of people. Your duty is to go and make all nations the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever he has commanded. Do you think, your duty is to extract charms from people's bodies? It is not. Rather your duty is to preach and pray. Crusaders have been told to go and preach the gospel, and make all nations the disciples of God. If you do not baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you have failed in your divinely assigned duties. By the same token if you do not teach them to observe all things whatsoever the Lord has commanded, and to refrain from sin, you have failed. Has he directed you to tell the people, Olamba Olamba Obu is God, the Christ or the Holy Spirit? Is such proclamation your assignment? If you tell people, Olamba Olamba Obu is God but you fail to baptize and preach the word of God to them, what reward have you? Hail the supernatural teacher, I am a supernatural teacher. I teach you the word of God, I do not read, I do not learn. I preach the truth, without adding or subtracting. I am the truth and the faithful. Brotherhood is the word of God. I teach you nothing but the word of God. Even if you read some of our books, you will be enlightened and delighted. Do not preach, but tell them to read the pamphlets, what is brotherhood. If they accept, they will go for baptism and they will be saved. Paul went to a certain place and there preached for three months but when the people spoke evil against him, he departed to another place. At the other place where people accepted him, his handkerchief and apron were used in healing the sick who were brought to him in the evening. Acts chapter 19 verse 12 Our Lord Jesus Christ had directed his disciples that into whatever house they would enter, they should say, Peace be unto this house. If there be a child of peace, their peace will abide with him. But if there be no child of peace, they should depart and shake the dust of their feet as testimony against them. Matthew chapter 10 verse 14 Preach and baptize, you all have now been commissioned to go and make all nations the disciples of God, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. God is always before and behind you. He is inside you. He is in your eyes in your head and around you. Since he dwells in you, he has sent you forth and you have to go. When he sends you out, he is before and behind you, and he does the work also. All those who accept you, believe in God and are baptized, are saved. If you do not receive the Holy Spirit how will you do this work? Realize, you do not believe in God, when you take people to see the Father instead of your preaching to them to refrain from sin and be baptized. You are so hard-hearted to bring somebody from London to Calabar to see the father, and he pays your transport because you could not afford it. You facelessly tell the father, he is a great man, and you want to have a private audience with him. I do not understand what you mean by having a private audience, whereas you have been sent forth to make all nations the disciples of God. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. John chapter 14 verse 12. That is why, in this kingdom, we baptize people in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If you are so baptized, you are saved. This is the judgment. If you accept, you are justified. When you repent and baptize, you receive the Holy Spirit, Peter publicly declared, repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts chapter 2 verses 38 and 39 If you do not impart this lesson to your brothers, how would they be saved? You have been commissioned, I am not sending you out but Jehovah God and his Christ is sending you out. You should, therefore, 
comply with the injunction. Go and make all nations my disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Who has been able to do that? This is the cause of your problem. The Christ is glorified as King and Lord, there is no use urging somebody to follow you to Calabar, or to Lagos or to any other place, but rather go and make all nations my disciples. Our Lord Jesus Christ has come to assume his rulership. It is said, call him Emmanuel, call him Lord Jesus. He has come to be glorified as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Go and tell it to the people, he has arrived, he is now on earth. The word should be told, God is now on earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ is on earth, the Holy Spirit is also on earth and the children of God are here and all the angels have arrived, it is time for judgment, and every person should refrain from sin. All those who believe and are baptized are justified. But if your carnal father does not believe and is not baptized he is condemned. Tell them, membership of any church denomination will not help them. Membership of any secret society, whether Ogboni, Amok, Freemason or Odd Fellows, will not save them. Neither would they be saved because they are presidents, governors, prime ministers, kings or millionaires, excepting of course, they refrain from falsehood, theft, fornication, and all acts of vice. Be born again to be saved, have you not heard what you should do? Whosoever believes is baptized. Our Lord Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, Except you are born of water and of the Holy Spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 5 To be born of water is baptism. Here I am not referring to the type of baptism you administer to people. You tell them to go and baptize so their infirmities may be healed, so they may be discharged and acquitted from their cases in court, so they may have children and money. When you tell people to be baptized for certain conditions, they will be compelled to be baptized, so they have relief from their sufferings. But while they go into the water of baptism, their juju, charms and preparations of concoctions are still in their houses, they are still fornicating and stealing. Is that baptism? A great many people here do not know the meaning of baptism. They only go to bathe in water. When you preach the word of God, whoever feels, he is naked because he is an evildoer, when he repents and confesses his sins, burning his mystical books, denouncing his membership of the secret society, forsaking all the mundane things, before he falls in water for baptism, is the person who is baptized and who is empowered with the Holy Spirit. Have you not heard, our Lord Jesus Christ baptizes with fire and the Holy Spirit? Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 When you preach the word of God, inform them, all necromancers, fornicators, drunkards, those who begrudge and bear malice against others, those who snuff and smoke, those who sow the seed of discord, commit murder and tell lies, will perish. If they denounce their membership of secret societies, refrain from their sins, it means, they have forsaken all those things and therefore have no relationship with the worldly things. When they confess their sins, repent and are baptized, they will receive the Holy Spirit. Baptism is administered gratis, baptism has no precondition. You tell somebody to baptize and you will give him 20 naira, or that it will give him scholarship. What form of baptism is that? Whoever realizes, he is baptized, he will receive the Holy Spirit and will be justified. Why is it, you are still a member of Amok, Ogboni, Oddfellow, Freemason, De Lawrence, and you go to be baptized? What type of baptism is that? You are not yet baptized. If somebody comes to you and claims to be a good and righteous person, he is a pastor and a communicant but refuses to be baptized, leave him alone. It means he has not believed, he is condemned. Go and bring those who profess to be popes, bishops, pastors or reverends to listen to only one gospel, whether their nakedness will not be exposed. The golden text will now be read. Golden text, Matthew chapter 10 verse 8, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Brethren, have you heard that? This gift is not bestowed on any particular person. It is bestowed on all those who have the Spirit of the Lord upon them. The commission is, you should heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out devils, freely you have received, freely you give. 
You do not have to charge even a cobo for anything God has performed through you. The only group of people who do not charge for what they do is the Crusaders group. However, not all of them. Some Crusaders are still charging money. Have you heard the operative sentence? It is said you receive freely, give freely. Heal the sick free of charge. Give sight to the blind gratis. The power, spirit, gift, and grace are all bestowed on you free of charge. Why then do you charge for what God has wrought through you? You extract charms from people's bodies and charge money. When you preach, you charge for it also. Is that the commission given to you? When you are baptized, nothing has dominion over you, all those who believe and are baptized are bestowed with power, and they will raise the dead, make the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, cast out demons. If they drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. When you claim, God had given you special power, are you sure? Any person who believes and is baptized is saved and these signs will follow you. All, you say will be upheld, and sickness, death, poverty and tribulation have no dominion over you. You will always walk about boldly. Even if you fall into the sea, the sea will become dry, so you may not sink. It is shameful for a child of God to go to the hospital for medication, is it not a shameful thing for an apostle of God to go to a small girl and ask her to give him prayer because his problems are unbearable? Is it not a shameful thing for a crusader of your caliber to go and prostrate before somebody to pray for you, because your many problems have confounded you and made you run berserk? Can you definitely call yourself a crusader? You profess to be a brotherhood, a child of the leader but you shamelessly go to the hospital with bottle in hand for medication. You cannot be my son. You received freely, give freely, brethren, have you heard what is read to you? It is said authoritatively, go and cast out demons, raise the dead, make the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear and cleanse the lepers. Freely you received, freely you give. Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 Who goes to the battlefield and is not equipped with the army uniform, boots, hat, gun, bullets, and other fighting implements, and is well prepared for the battle? Brotherhood children, the Father has adorned you, the Father has clothed you with power from on high, to go into the world and raise the dead, to cast out demons, to cause the blind to gain their sight, to cleanse the leper, to heal the sick. But you received freely, so you must also give out freely. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 All those who receive you are justified, but those who reject you are condemned. It is your behavior that causes people to blaspheme against brotherhood, do not plead with any person to repent. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke chapter 5 verse 32 do not tell anybody to follow you to Calabar to see the Father, so he may be discharged and acquitted in his case, or solve all his problems, as if I were a native doctor. It is because of your behavior, people speak evil against brotherhood and the ways of God. You who sit, stand, lie down, walk or speak, have you not been endowed with power to raise the dead, cleanse the leper, heal the sick and cast out demons? You come to the Father and kneel down with many others for blessing. You receive prayer, oil and water but you shamelessly go to a brother who knelt down with you to give you prayers. Are your senses correct? Only enslave yourself to the Holy Spirit, though all the crusaders go to the Father for blessing, some crusaders for one reason or the other, enslave themselves to other crusaders, give all their money and services to them as if they keep them alive or as if they were their God. Can you sincerely refer to such persons as crusaders? Are they good for anything? Pray and speak the word and the heavens will shake. You have been commissioned out. Whatever is your station in life, whether you are big or small, whether you are a man or woman, you have been sent forth to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to cleanse the leper, to heal the sick, make the blind to see and the lame to walk, you received freely, give also freely. A laborer is worthy of his hire, there is no occasion for fear, and when you go, carry neither pass nor script nor shoes, nor food nor two coats because a laborer is worthy of his hire. Luke chapter 10 verses 4 and 7. If you take up the calling, your food and clothing are assured. When you go to the house of a millionaire to preach the word of God, 
all his children, his wife, his relations, and he himself will prostrate on the ground groaning with pain of death. Here is a man with many insurmountable problems, and you quickly move in and pray saying, Let thanks and praises be given to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All their problems are solved, their sickness cured. The money in the house and all other things are yours. Do you not know any city overrun by what belongs to the government? Whosoever has problems and is liberated by the Father belongs to the Father. The irony of faith is, you are carrying the carcass of an elephant on the head, but searching for snails with your legs. How much are snails sold for? The inhabitants of the whole world are carrying death in their palms. You have been commissioned to go and give them life in place of death. Peace, life, power, love, wisdom, truth and all other virtues of God in this kingdom reside with you. Rise up, therefore, go forth and convert all nations, and make them the disciples of God. Right now God has destroyed charms, concoctions, and all diabolical things. They have been rendered useless. Only the word of God now reigns. The word of God is reigning in water, on dry land, in the flesh and in the spirit. Why do you profess to be a crusader, but you advise somebody coming to preach to you, to keep the word of God aside, because you are engaged in a very important thing? Sometimes you advise, the word of God should be set aside, because you are discussing an important thing. What discussion is more important than the word of God? You profess to be a brotherhood member but you tell a preacher to set aside the word of God because you are doing something very important. What is more important than the word of God? Paul said, I have been imprisoned. The word of God is no respecter of persons. In the court before King Agrippa, Paul preached the word of God to a point, the king became so inspired, he retorted, when Paul said, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God, that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost, and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Acts chapter 26 verses 27 to 29. Let the words of the Christ dwell in you richly, if you go to the market with the words of God, you will carry away so many articles free of charge. Wherever you go to preach the word of God you become enriched but you toy with the word of God. The scripture says, Let the words of our Lord Jesus Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 All our songs are the words of God. The visions given are the words of God. What we preach is the word of God. What is called the kingdom of God is the word of God. The word of God has been bestowed on you, go and preach it to the people and disseminate the good tidings because only the word of God will make the world perfect. Children of God are everywhere, if the word of God has not yet gone around the whole world, the end is not yet in sight. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 Because the children of God are found everywhere in the world, they are in Jerusalem, they are in Europe, Asia, Egypt, London, Persia, Russia, India and in all parts of the world. They are preparing to come. When they hear the voice of the Father, they will all follow after Him. Only the Word of God will make the world good, neither money, nor human beings, nor any other thing can make this world perfect. Only the Word of God will bring about the perfection of the world. The Word of God has entered with a view to ruling the whole world. What do you think is shaking this world? It is the Word of God. It turns the world upside down and shakes everything, the heavens, earth, water, the abyss and human beings alike. If you profess to be crusaders why do you not preach the word of God? Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly, why is it, the word of Christ does not dwell richly in you? Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 It is said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 I preach all year round for 365 days every year, from January 1st to December 31st. Can you confirm this? I use the word of God to change you and drive away evil spirits, and you receive the Holy Spirit. Go therefore, and preach these words throughout the world. You received freely. Do not collect anything from anybody in cash or kind, 
or the punishment of God will be visited on you. The Father deliberately kept this crusader's week to liberate every person and to reveal this glory to the world. You have no problems, neither death nor sickness, nor poverty. You are all saved forever. Put your money into the common pass, Matthew, the tax collector was a millionaire. When our Lord Jesus Christ called him, all his money went into the disciples' common pass. Zacchaeus was also a very wealthy man but when he was called by the Christ, he passed all his money into the disciples' common pass. More so others who were rich did the same. How can you preach the word of God and be again in lack or go hungry? This is not possible. Most people in the world are afflicted under the fear and torment of evil spirit and mermaid. They spend millions of naira to banish the fear and live a free life but cannot have salvation. If you go to preach to them the kingdom of God, they will be liberated. Like they just concluded general elections, some people had spent millions of naira during campaigns, if you had gone to educate them by imparting the word of God to them, they would not have spent that much. Testify about this kingdom, go out and give your testimonies. Write them and circulate to people who are still ignorant about this kingdom. Can you light a candle and cover it with a bushel? Brethren, I do not intend to be tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his words. Amen. Thank you, Father.